hi and welcome back to another GIS based back digitizing tutorial. This time I would like to create a full embroidery design with you made from an imported JPEG. Now first of all you have to start a new design, which is possible here over the start window directly to click on this icon. Here under file you have the possibility to import a picture from a file. This one, open. We would recommend that you start with a picture from 300 dpi so that the resolution is still correct and you can you can see enough when you do the embroidery. This window always automatically opens. It shows you the dpi actually and the original size. You've got now the possibility with the left mouse button to make a measurement from whatever part of the picture. And here you can make a new measurement. So this is now from the resolution 7 centimeters high. I want to make it 8.5. Okay, and there is your picture. Now before you start the digitizing, imagine it's not printing. So think in layers. What has to be done first? For example, here the cactus is underneath and the hat is on top. And also here the lettering. It's on top of the green. You save a lot of work if you think about that first and then do the digitizing step by step. Start the digitizing. You go here into the coordinate mode and start with your first field. Now, the best friend forever in your life with the digitizing software base pack will be this icon here. It's the insertion and override mode. This is switched off. You can only select areas. But nothing will happen. If you start this insertion, now it's active, you can actually start to set your first stitches. Here on the right hand side you see your x and y coordinates and the actual size of your stitches. Right now I'm in the so-called manual punching in the manual stitch setting which is here this icon. So that means where I click with my mouse will be a stitch and that's exactly what the machine would stitch. Of course, if I now start to fill this whole area, I don't want to set stitch by stitch. So I have to choose an automatic program. Now we've got different possibilities here. Depending on the size of your embroidery, let's say I have it eight and a half centimeters. So this would be big enough for a step fill area. The step fill area we choose this auto contour program here. If I start to select it, I will automatically have this red line here. So I will start to now draw a reference line around my shape. Double click is a corner point and one click gives you a curve point. You can later also adjust the points, just like a drawing line. Okay, now I have to define how I want my stitches to fill this shape. So do I want my stitches to fill like this or this direction? So you basically define your direction. This is what you can do here on top. This is your wavy stitch direction or a straight direction line. I now click here with my left mouse button and choose my stitch direction. And just like another line, you can now make a curve fill here. And now I want to choose the style on how to fill my area. We've got here our um, edge type and our fill stitch type. The quickest way is also here to do a pre-selected one. Now I can just say enter and it will automatically calculate my area. Here I'm back in my manual punching because what I do now, I do have to do my back tacking. So before I trim and change to the next color, I have to fix the thread in the material. What you always have to look, here's your endpoint. What I always do, just click somewhere so that you can find your stitch again. So I now just make a few stitches to fix the thread. Important is the first ones don't matter. You see here they are underneath. They are just anywhere. 
the last ones you have to make in the same direction like you do the main shape otherwise if they are on top and then just like opposite direction they would be visible in the end and it won't look nice so just don't make a crazy knot just make them in the same direction okay how do we continue now i want to make this face here okay i now have to change my color and before that i need to trim the thread Otherwise, it would stitch in here and then change the color here. Now I can click here on trimming. And you see here on the right hand side, trimming is inserted. Now I have to click on this icon here and choose the next needle. Just go from needle 1 to needle 2 to needle 3 and so on. The color arrangement you can set later. We do that in the very last step. So don't worry about the colors too much now. Just take the next needle now. Okay, so I click now here. And needle 2 is active. And now I can just click on my new position and make again some fixing stitches. Now, this area here is so thin that I choose to make it a running stitch this time. Okay, so I choose here another program and use this running type here. Again, my red line. Here you have the possibility of a branch. So from here, I now make a subline. So now I can choose here my stitch length. Four millimeters quite long. I make it two millimeters. Okay, enter to confirm what I enter here. And enter again to do my calculation. Again, here is my black little cross. So from here, I do my fixing stitch again. Now I want to stick with the color, but I want to change my, my position. So I just do a trim and go to my new position. And back in manual punching, so make a small knot. And here now I want to do a satin stitch. So I choose another program here, this structured one. Again, my red line. So I know it's an automatic program. Now I have to also choose here my stitch direction. Left and left. Now make it, this is important, make it opposite of the, of the ground underneath. So the step fill is going that direction. So the best way for the satin stitch is if you do the opposite one. Otherwise it disappeared within the lines of the underneath area. Here I can now choose satin stitch and do one calculation. I want to now double check here the density. I find this quite open for a small object, so I make this value smaller. Enter and enter again for a calculation. Okay, I'm back in my menu punching. Do my fixing in the direction of the top stitches and trim again and go to the next color. Here it's important, this will be on top of that one. So I will later go and push this one underneath that so that there is no gap coming. So I'm happy with that and now I want to edit this shape here. This one here becomes important again. I switch this one off and now I, with my mouse key, I can freely select any area. Right now I click on this outside shape and I'm actually able to stitch click by click, change your shape. So that you have a little bit of an overlap here. Right mouse button and recalculate. This is how you continue now step by step and create your whole design. Right, so now you've finished all your shapes. I would recommend this stage, now you change the colors to the actual colors your design should have. Therefore, we click here on the design info. And here we've got all the major information on the, on the design. 
Also here you can now see the needles that we've used. I used one, two, two, three, four, five, and so on. Double click onto the color field now and you're able to change it. Activate the first one and choose a color here from the side. Now this is already green, this is not green yet. With the left mouse button click inside and you will have a preview. Second one, and this should be black. Click inside and so on. This one I like in red, maybe this kind of red. No, that's too pink, I want darker red. Okay, okay again. And this already looks more like a cactus. Right, okay, now some, some other advice from digitizing point of view. It makes more sense or it is technically better if you do the bigger fields with more stitches first. What we did, we did the green area and then we did the small bits here. We want them at a later point. No problem, you can just change the order of those. Here you see we've got embroidery order and module mode. Here we can highlight all the objects. If we're in this field, we're actually able to select with my control key certain blocks, hold the mouse key, the left one, and shift them down. Now we've got this one, then comes number three, and then comes the black one. Also here you possibly you're able to change the color. So imagine I want in another needle, right now it's needle six. If I click on this one, I'm able to choose a different needle. Now that this is finished, I can now click into each of the objects and change their parameters. Make sure this one is switched off again, otherwise you would insert something else. I want to click on the area. Right now you can already see here, we've got so-called division lines. Each stitch row will stitch in those lines. If I now select my preview, you will see here will appear some kind of gap and gives it some additional 3D effect. On top of that, you can even use here stencils and give it another shape. So when you start doing digitizing, always keep in mind back checking first, manual stitches, click, 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 automatic program, draw a reference line. Enter, back checking again, trim, needle change, and the same procedure again. So this is some kind of process you have to get used to. In the beginning, you'll probably forget some of the back checkings, but you will immediately see on the machine because it will most probably unravel your thread. So once you're happy with your design, you can give it a test run on the machine. There are two different files you always work on. You have the raw data of the base pack, you know, like I click here and be able to change all parameters and change size. And then if you put this on the machine, you need the so-called stitch file. The machine is only able to read stitch direction and length and trim commands, needle change commands. So therefore you need to export your file. And for this, we have an icon here, export. At this step, you choose your start and end point of your, of your design in order to somehow put this into your frame on the machine. So I start with the center and put my, my end point also moving back to the start point. Okay. And choose your transport code. The ZSK transport code is perfect to work with the ZSK machine because the ZSK machine is able to read your needle arrangement. I will now select this one and press OK. And I will now insert my USB key or put this, let's say, on the desktop in my export file. Save. And now your design is ready to be put on the machine. So I hope you're successful and you have some fun with doing some trials. I thank you once again for watching my videos. My name is Berta Sanders from ZSK. If there are any questions or comments, just leave them below or speak to me on the next show. I'm looking forward to see you there. Bye bye.